Yeah. In uh, this chapter four, the way it is being explained is very different from how it is being explained in uh, other textbook or even university level. It tries to give us a lot of details though, but at the same time, the details that they give us, uh, not only in the order that I don't really like, again, I'm not saying this in the sense that blaming the textbook, but uh, mm, not in the order of what we really need, at least for our department final. So uh, for us to be able to do the department final well, you need to be able to know to do uh, 4.3, actually, 4.2 and 4.3. Okay, so I have a tendency to go further, uh, to go to 4.2, 4.3 very fast. But at the same time, I need to be aware, we need to be aware with the terminologies being used in our textbook uh, is actually quite different from the terminologies being used in uh, other textbook or even at higher level. Uh, for example, uh, for example, this term, predictor variable, explanatory variable. Okay, strangely, our textbook never mentioned that this is also called independent variable. And the response variable. The variable that being explained is also called dependent variable. Now, once we explain, once we define it as independent variable, dependent variable, all of a sudden it justifies the use of variable x and the use of variable y. Now, if you have read this uh, section, chapter four, and also watch the lecture video I provide you, I hope uh, you now see the connection that our textbook called that predictor and response for independent and dependent variable, respectively. And when it comes to the scatter plot, you will see the explanatory variable or independent variable uh, is our x axis and the response is our y-axis. Just like what we learn in algebra, uh, independent variable is x, dependent variable is y. y equals to fx. This is independent. And the y is the dependent. I hope that explains why the explanatory always, uh, when we draw the scatter plot, okay, the explanatory always the x-axis and the response always the y-axis. Now, okay, now in this chapter, we are interested in two big words. The first one is uh, correlation. And the second one is linear regression. A lot of details actually should be put in there. Oops. Yeah, a lot of details should be put in here. Um, I have a tendency to, for the purpose of time, I have a tendency to explain the regression first uh, and then uh, going back to correlation. But at least for now, we see that when we say correlation here, it is in sense of linear correlation. In sense of linear correlation, just like when we say regression, it is in sense of linear regression. Now, we say that these two variables have positive uh, linear correlation. If the slope, if you can kind of like think that this data is very close to a, a line, very close to a line with positive slope. 
if you think that this scatter plot, yeah, it's not exactly in, in a line, but uh, more or less close to a line with positive slope, then we say that it has a positive uh, correlation or to be more precise, positive linear correlation. Okay, well, if the slope of the line uh, fit the data is uh, has negative slope, then we say that ha it has negative linear correlation. Negative correlation. Now in our graph number three here, uh, even though we can see that it actually fits, uh, it actually fits uh, quite a parabola, right? Okay, but it's non-linear. It's non-linear. Okay, so it has. We can say that it has a non-linear uh, correlation. Okay, it has non-linear correlation. We have correlation, but it's non-linear. Okay, likewise in the fourth graph here, it seems like we can use the x to predict the y, but not in the linear sense. You see, not in the linear sense. So it is still, uh, it still have correlation. In other words, x can be used to predict the y, uh, but not in a linear sense. Okay, now the thing is, we don't learn these two. We don't learn these two. We don't learn this. Okay, using the technology or the method we use here, uh, using the technology or the method we use in this chapter four, if we try to apply our, tech, uh, our method uh, to this case, for example, then the number we get will be no correlation. Will be no correlation. While if we apply our method to the scattered plot that looks like this later on, we may be uh, we may be uh, deceived by thinking that it actually fits this kind of linear correlation. Okay, the method we use here, the method we use here uh, can be applied to any scattered data. Can be applied to any scattered data. Okay, can be applied to any scattered data. Now, the thing is, is the correlation strong enough linearly? Uh, in this case, no, but in this case, yes. So, uh, actually, before we assume there's linear correlation. We're supposed to do the scatter uh, scatter plot first. Okay, we're supposed to do the scatter plot first. That's why this is not something easy to teach, though. Uh, we need to know how to use a uh, graphing or your TI eighty four calculator first, or otherwise you use Excel. Now, in the last one here, in the last uh, graph here. Uh, seems like there's no explanatory, uh, no relation, not even linear uh, relation. But if you insist to use that method, if you insist to use that method, it seems like this line is the, the fittest line. The line that fit the most. Okay. Yeah, the line that fit the most. You can always find the the best fitting line. You can always find the best fitting line, uh, which we need to define separately later on. But uh, why they say there's no linear uh, relation here? Well, because the even if you have a line, that line, that line is flat such that even when your x increasing, it doesn't tell anything about your y if it is above or below the line. Okay. Uh, uh, 
So how to say that there's no, yeah, there, we say that there's no correlation linear, uh, there's no linear correlation in that case, okay? In other words, X, uh, Y, uh, which we assume to be dependent on X, turns out to be independent, okay? Now that's a brief introduction about uh, this linear regression and linear correlation. Uh, the one we anticipate the most will be these two cases here. Okay, the one we anticipate the most will be these two cases. Now, going further, you will see later on we have uh, a coefficient of correlation called R. Actually, we can read it down here. Definition, linear correlation coefficient is denoted by R if it comes from sample. Okay, if it comes from sample, it comes, uh, we call it, we write that R. And if it comes from population, we'll call that rho. Okay, so you see that rho, this rho here, is the Greek letter of R. Okay, this is sample uh, coefficient of correlation and this is uh, population coefficient of correlation. In fact, uh, the further you go up there, you will see that we simply call this R sample correlation and the row is a population correlation. Okay, now and in going back to figure two, and in this case, we see that the correlation is positive. Look at the slope, look at the slope. Okay, look at the slope of the line. If we have linear correlation, then here the correlation is positive, and this one here, the correlation is negative. Okay. Now, our textbook gives us these formulas for sample linear correlation formulas for the coefficients. Uh, that's the definition formula. That's the definition formula. And they give us the computation formula, but actually we won't even use that one. We won't even use this one. Uh, we, will use, we will just use calculate to compute R, to compute R, we will use calculator in this class. Okay, uh, with some side note, I may ask you to compute manually as extra credit. Yeah, because my concern is what happens if later on you go to higher level? Uh, if you need to do a multiple linear regression, so they call that uh, not simple and not simple linear regression. It depends on more than one dependent uh, independent variable. Well, anyway, uh, we will compute R by calculator first, and then I will we will I will teach you how to compute that manually. Okay, but uh, the formula provided to us here is actually uh, kind of 
how to say it, it's uh, unbelievably hard. Uh, this, this, they call it computation formula, but this, this formula is actually hard to use, very hard to use. Uh, let me just write it down, the, the formula. The formula for this R, uh, as I know, R is equal to the better one, okay, the better one. Okay, N times the sum of X, Y minus the sum of X, the sum of Y over the square root of N sum of X squared minus the sum of X D squared and times the sum of y squared minus the sum of y d squared. Okay, now this formula is actually easier to, to use. And the idea is basically multiplying this formula here on the top and the bottom by n. Okay, now, of course, n can be expressed as square root of n times square root of n at the bottom. And I will distribute the square root of n to the first radical and the second square root of n to the second radical. Then it gives what uh, the formula that we have. Now, this formula that I give you actually easier to memorize. Uh, because it mimics very, very closely. It mimics very, very, very closely to the variance formula that we learned before. In your formula, is x and y supposed to represent x bar, y bar? No, no, it's not. It's not. No. Uh, in my formula, we don't have uh, we don't have x bar, y bar. In my formula. I don't have x bar y bar. And actually in this formula, we don't have x bar y bar too. Okay? It has that in the definition formula. It has that in the definition formula, but not in uh, not in our formula here. Yeah, not in our formula here. Okay? No, we don't have that. Uh, uh, this formula R, the coefficient so it's just observational variable. That's right. Uh -huh. It's all observational variable. These numbers X and Y that we have here all come from observations. Just like just like the way we compute our uh, uh, samples variance, right? So S squared or S squared equals to this. This one here, right? Okay, it's all observational. Yeah, so we didn't get uh, we didn't get x bar. Now I want you to realize that in the past we call this s x squared here, right? Okay, so s x is the square root of that, right? Okay, is the square root of that. Yeah, you need to have a pretty strong algebra to see what I do here, though. But this is just, it's a challenge for those who say that, oh, you know what, I passed pre-calculus, then uh, take care of this, okay? Yeah, so as x is that, so as sub y, standard deviation of the, in for the dependent variable will be n sum of y squared minus the sum of y d squared over n times n minus one, okay? So when I multiply this, when I multiply s, x times s, y, standard deviations of the x, standard deviation of the y's, then I will get 1 over n times n minus 1 square root of n sum of x squared minus sum of x being squared times square root of n sum of y squared minus sum of y d squared. 
okay now the top part so so you see that the bottom part here this guy here is actually this guy okay now the top part the top part is actually called uh, the numerator of covariance now you may not have seen the word covariance call remember the the notation variance of x variance of x is equal to uh, in sense of sample let me see in sense of sample sample variance of x is variance of x is n times sum of x squared. Let me write it as xx minus sum of x squared, right? Over n times n minus 1. Now, that's the variance of x. Sample variance of x. Okay, now covariance, covariance between x and y is basically changing one of the x into y. So it would be n times the sum of xy minus the sum of x, the sum of y over n times n minus 1. Now, the correlation C O phi of x, y, also denoted by R, the way we wrote it above, is basically covariance of x, y divided by sample standard deviation of x sample standard deviation of y in which the denominator n times n minus 1 will cancel. So the previous x subscript x squared is for population not for sample. It is for sample because I use s that's for sample. The one that we have here that's for sample. This is for sample. Yeah, uh, for two reasons. S is the sample standard uh, sample standard deviation for uh, yeah sample standard deviation, right? And then I use lowercase n here, right? I use lowercase n. So yes, this is for sample. This is for sample. Okay, this is for sample. <clears throat> now, notice that if uh, so so uh, take a look, take a look. Uh, the covariance formula, that's 1 over n times n minus 1 times n sum of xy minus sum of x sum of y over sx x sy. This guy here, which is the same to this. I wonder if you, you notice that. Okay, yeah, that's the same to that, right? Okay, so I will have 1 over n times n minus 1 multiplied by the square root of n times sum of x squared minus sum of x being squared, square root of n times sum of y squared minus sum of y being squared. Oops, sorry, the square should be also. in which then you notice that this cancels, right, it's cancel. And it gives us the formula that I mentioned above. This is the formula I mentioned above earlier. That's how we get that formula. So correlation coefficient, actually the covariance divided by the product of standard deviations. 
Now, just wondering, this is R, which is the sample correlation. What will the formula for rho population correlation? Let's say the X and Y, actually the numbers you get, the data you get from just a population, everything. Believe it or not, there's no N minus one there, right? Just change that lowercase N becomes capital N, that's it. Okay, so if you have rho, if this were rho instead, this becomes capital N, capital N, capital N, that's it. Okay, well, anyway, anyway, here, here's the thing though, here's the thing. Or well, one of the things that I'm really scared of when I teach this part is uh, uh, how this formula relates one to the other while we'll, with our textbook that is using uh, formula that is involving complex fractions. You see, it used complex fractions. So you have fraction inside a fraction, you know, not in simplified form. Okay, so the formula itself, if you actually use that formula, it looks quite scary though. It looks quite scary, you know, okay. And there are so many things that uh, our textbook actually skip from teaching, which is what we call the covariance idea. Well, anyway, don't worry about it. Uh, for now, uh, I think for the next one hour, we will use calculator to compute this. Uh, to be more precise, we don't compute it. We plug it into calculator and let calculator compute it for us. Okay. Uh, so, so, so please keep in mind, we do not use this formula. We do not use this formula. Okay. Not that they are wrong, but it's just like too long to use. They're not wrong, but too long to use. Even if you want to use it, use this one. Okay. Even if you want to compute it, use this one. A lot faster, actually, your, your calculator and your computer can compute it a lot faster than that. Okay, now, uh, next, the properties of linear correlation coefficient. Uh, the first one, uh, I think this is the most important one, is R is between negative one to one. Okay, now, positive one, if it has positive linear recorrelation, and r equals to negative one if it is negative now the closer r to positive one then the stronger the evidence of positive association now what is positive association thomas positive association is like the one we have here this is positive association if the dependent variable increases then the independent variable also increases positive slope Okay, uh, positive slope. Now, what I have to avoid uh, you to misunderstand that that the the closer R to one, then the more positive the slope. No, 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 no. This is that's not what it means. That's not what it means. Okay, so uh, the closer R to positive one means the scattered plot gets closer to the regression line. with positive slope. Okay, the slope is positive, maybe very small positive, maybe the slope is 0 0.2, okay, but it means that the scatter plot, these dots here, gets closer to the line. Now, what happened if the R is closer to negative one? Uh, the same idea. It means the scatter plot gets closer to the regression line, and that regression line has 
uh, negative slope. Now, what happens when r is close to zero? Uh, it means little or no evidence of linear regression, linear relation. Okay. Yeah. Now, it means that no relation does not imply no relation. It's just imply no linear regression. Uh, for example, this guy here, this guy here, this guy here, when we compute the R for that case, you will see the R is very close to zero, right? But it's clearly that we have regression there. It's just the regression is not linear. The regression is quadratic, okay? So the linear correlation coefficient R that we compute uh, tells us if we have uh, linear uh, regression, strong association of linear regression. Okay, so you may have a regression that is not linear. Okay, and the R is very close to zero. Okay, the R is very close to zero in that case. Uh, linear correlation is unitless and non-resistant. Uh, part eight basically says that basically says that outliers, outliers, careful with outliers. It's sensitive. It's sensitive. If you have one observation that does not follow the pattern of the other group of data, uh, it will affect the, the R uh, quite heavily. It's quite sensitive. Okay, now uh, that's half an hour of theoretical and terminology. Uh, let me teach you right away how to find this R, okay? In fact, what I'm going to do right now is uh, what we will do next. Is to find R by calculator. R squared, I will explain that later on. And then the linear regression. Which we will write in form of Y hat equals to A plus DX. Now, the lecture video you watch use beta 0 plus beta 1X plus error okay in higher level that's what they will write okay where this is the part that we can predict this is the part that we cannot explain okay that's for the y actually that's for the y okay i get a note earlier let's see we get all the this one, uh, the one that uh, type here, it's actually in your textbook. The one type here is uh, your textbook, but the one here, don't worry about this for now. Don't worry about this for now. I will give you the formula later. Yeah, I will give you the formula later. But uh, actually, you will see that what we really need is uh, we usually get this, right? Okay, and we just need this more. We need this, and then we need. So there will be only three more columns uh, from the two basic columns we have. Okay. But uh, don't worry about that. We do that later. We do that later. Let's focus on the one that we need for our department final first. Okay. The computation is quite heavy to do by hand, such that even if I do, if even when I ask this question in your test, I will ask that. Uh, in the sense that you will just use your calculator, okay? And like what I said earlier, uh, if I do ask you to do it by hand, to so manually, that will be in the sense of extra credit. 
Okay. Let's see. Um, let's see. Let me pick a question from our textbook. Data from our textbook. Give me a second. Let me pick question number 18 from 4.1. Question number 18 from 4.1. Number 18 from section 4.1. By the way, uh, linear regression is one method being used to uh, do the prediction about uh, climate change now i hope you know my back uh, my i hope you know me a bit on this uh, when it comes to climate change when it comes to climate change this is what i believe and i do have data actually backing me Okay, and I do have some professors from Ivy League actually on my side too. Actually, you go to climate, you Google climate change uh, and go Wikipedia and you will see there are actually enough number of scientists disagree with uh, global warming. Yeah, to the, the 10, 15 years ago, they called it global warming. Right now, they call it uh, climate change, as if climate never uh, always, uh, climate were not changing in the past and suddenly because of human, the climate change. No, climate have been changing even before human exists. Uh, but Thomas, that's what they, not what it means to be climate change. Then don't, don't use the word climate change. Uh, Stick with your global warming, even though you still need to define what is global warming. People say uh, the average temperature is increasing uh, in the last 50 years. Uh, actually, if you extend it around thousands of years, uh, you will see that it's actually cycles. The temperature is actually going this way. What we see right now seems like it's like this. That's what we see right now, okay? But if you look at the whole larger cycle, it's actually like this. Even in pre-industrial time, if we look at the cycle for hundred thousands of years and we zoom it in, it looks like this. This is just to illustrate what actually happens. So we may be looking at, maybe our window is actually here. Our window may be here, such that it seems like uh, it's increasing, but uh, no, when you, our, our global warming actually has a pattern that fits better with uh, the solar flare that happens every 11 years, approximately, you know, okay? And to say that carbon dioxide is the main, one of the main uh, green gas that uh, contribute a lot to global warming is actually not really reliable also because during ice age, during ice age, concentration of carbon dioxide is actually the highest. So in other words, carbon dioxide can be, has, can has a high concentration, yet at the same time, the temperature is very cold. So no, no, we cannot use that issue. Again, I'm not alone. I don't want to argue with those people who say, well, Thomas, the science is on, on my side. Yeah, okay, the science is on my side too. Uh, but how far have you learned statistics? Otherwise, uh, you know what, save it for later, okay? Uh, one of the big warning when we do linear regression is this. 
one of the big warning that our textbook didn't really mention is this. Do not ex extrapolate too much. Do not extrapolate too much. Okay, we can interpolate, but we should not extrapolate. And actually, that was one question we have uh, in our department final. Not me, I'm, I was not the one who actually put that question in there. Uh, what I mean is the following. Suppose, what I mean by do not extrapolate too much is this. Suppose these are the data we have. Suppose these are the data we have. Suppose these were the data we have. And let's say this is the age. Okay, and this is the height. And we know if you are, let's say from seven years old up to let's say 25 years old, uh, this is the age and this is the height. And from our sample, we get this group of people age seven to age 25. And we can see that the higher, the, uh, the, the older that person, the more likely, the taller that person is, right? Okay, no. So we can use this linear regression line to predict numbers or age, uh, the height of uh, for people aged between seven to 25. You may be able to use this number to predict what happened if somebody, let's say, 27 years old? Then, yeah, we, we accept that it won't be too far from this uh, predictor line, the linear regression. But you know that you cannot use this for people aging 40 because after a while, we know, after a while, this line gets flat. In fact, once you reach 60 or 70 years old, it actually go down. So you cannot use the data that you collect from people age seven to 25 and try to say something about people who age 80. No, we know after a while, people start losing uh, some uh, calcium and uh, have reduced bone mass and therefore they get shorter once they get older, right? Okay, so what we mean by do not extrapolate to, too much, it's, it's okay. Of course, the theoretical, the theory is, says that you do not extrapolate. It means do not use, do not use this linear regression to predict far further from the maximum data you have. Okay, if the, your sample, has, the oldest sample you have is 25 years old, then try not to say anything about anybody more than 25 years old. Well, like what I said earlier, if you want to use that to predict the height of people uh, with age 26, 27, maybe it's still valid, but uh, to predict the height of people 80 years old, I don't think so. I don't think so. You know that if you use linear regression, this line actually has positive slope and increase, right? But in reality, we know nobody, nobody, if, if somebody 25 years old has height let's say 6.7 feet, let's say, and then seven years old has height, let's say four feet. Now, can you imagine what happened if that person's 80 years old? Do you expect that person to be like nine feet high? No, hell no, it won't happen. It won't happen. You see, from seven to 25, how many years is that? 18 years old? 18 years difference already increased by three feet? Okay, I use inches, sorry. So from 25 to 80, how many 18 years there? Using this regression, then that person must be more than 10 feet high. No, but it, it's ridiculous. That's not what we have in reality. Okay, so try to argue with me using this. Then I'll show you reality. And remember the empirical rule? Okay. Whatever our theory says, as long as it doesn't fit the reality, then it's invalid. Okay, then something wrong with your prediction. 
okay? And what's wrong with that is never use linear regression to extrapolate too far into future, okay? Too far into future, no, no. What we can do is actually predicting the numbers in between, but not after that, okay? Not after that, yeah. Uh, in fact, if you actually start using 17 years old here, for example, yeah, using 17 to 25, then you will see eventually a baby will have negative height. Or uh, a baby may have like uh, a one meter length, a three feet uh, length, which is, come on man, what happened to the mom? With that, with that kind of baby, you know, born zero age, but three feet length, come on, no way, right? No way, no way. So again, uh, do not extrapolate too much, okay? And we try to have the data uh, not too big also though. So what usually happen if you really need to do regression, not linear regression, uh, what you really, if you want to do regression, we usually do the following. We get all the data first. We get all the data first, including those who has 80 years old, right? Okay. And then for the part that you see, oh, you know what? There may be some linear regression here. Uh, then you collect the data, find the feeding line. And then from this group, you get another regression. And then for that group, you get another regression like that. That's actually more appropriate. Okay. That's actually more appropriate. Uh, to illustrate that further, uh, do not use the height of people, adults in America, to say anything about the height of people, adults in Indonesia. That's inappropriate. That's not right. Yeah. You basically judge somebody else's culture using your own glasses. Now, trust me, if somebody else judge your culture using their glasses, you look so ugly too. Okay, no, no, that's not what we do. Okay, now anyway, coming back here, coming back here, this is our X, this is our Y, and it doesn't really, here, it doesn't really tell us which one is dependent, which one is independent, okay? But we take it by faith that X is always independent, and that's why we call that X, and the Y is dependent the responsive okay Dep independent means the predictor the one we use to predict and this is predicted predict t i think so to be more precise okay they call that response now what i teach you here is how to use calculator okay what I teach you here is how to use calculator. So let me share this one. Now, what I want you to do is, oops, let me this. Uh, what I want you to do is uh, plug this number in that order to your calculator. Let me clear the list first. Oops, I remember yesterday I had to get this. This one. List two, list two. Add it. Is it all? Okay, good. Now then, uh, L1, my X, two, three, five, six, six. How many data? Five. Okay, I have five data. Now go to L2. The first one is 10 and then nine, and then seven, and then four, and then two. Now then, we go to stats, calculate linear rec, the fourth, the fourth one. Two. List one, X list is list one, oops. And then Y list is L2, list two, Go on, go on, go on, calculate. So 
So from here we see that uh, see our calculator uses a slightly different notation too. Um, so the linear regression, let me do the R squared first. R squared equals to 0 0.87128. 0 0.87128. What am I doing? I'll just quote it though. Just quote it here. Two. Then, so this is my R squared here. Now R is the square root of that. R equals to, the thing is, uh, we don't know the sign, the plus minus. The square root of that R squared, 0 0.87128, which will be, uh, in this case, negative 0 0.93342. Okay, now, how do we know that uh, this is negative later on. Suppose I give you R squared. How do you know that the R should be negative? How do we know the R should be negative? From the coefficient. Okay, from the coefficient. That's how we know that it will be negative. The coefficient, the slope of the linear regression. So Y hat equals to negative 1.72727x plus 14. I get a chat. That's right. We know that it's linear uh, negative correlation from the slope of the linear regression line, which is negative. Okay, now let's go on further. Suppose I want to see the graph. No, not this one. Yesterday I forgot to actually do the second. Uh, and then first one, and then X is L1. Okay, and then I go to Zoom Stats. That's what it looks like. If you do the scatter plot, this is what the scatter plot looks like. Let me pull it. We can do this on Excel too, though. Excel has the scatter plot. Let me put it This is the scatter plot. And you see that the line is, uh, it seems to have negative association. Okay. The further you go to the right, the y value gets low, smaller. Okay, now then, actually I want to go further, let me go back to my calculator. I forgot how to do the, uh, how to do the, if I want to insert, if I want to insert the linear regression there. x plus 14. I know that this is not the way. I know this is not the way. That's what it looks like. 
that's a that's a better way than what I did just now. So this is the scattered plot together with the with the regression line. <clears throat> Stack cog linear regression store requires why parts. Oh wow, that's a long <laughs> thank you, Lydia. Uh, let me try to follow what you say. Uh, so I go to stat calculate linear regression. Oh, the one underneath. So this is the one that uh, I actually prefer. The B is with the coefficient, while this one is the A with the coefficient. Okay, the one I did earlier. And then, Yeah, basically what it does is it actually put the regression equation there. Uh, the regression equation that I put in here was y1, right? y variance function y1, right? But that the, my y1 is actually the one I put here. Okay, the Y one. It change it. It does. Oh yeah, I I put more, huh? Yeah, I I put only five decimal places. Okay, yeah, thank you. It's just too much, huh? Just too much. Well, anyway. Uh, yeah, that's the scatter plot together with the. This is the regression line. This is the regression line. Okay, that's the regression line. Now, uh, what else I want to say here? The word residue. There's a, a word that we need to be careful. The word residue in our textbook is also called error in other textbook okay now that error represent the difference between the observed value minus the predicted value now suppose if this is the observe and this is the predicted for the same y for the same x or the same x now then the, the error actually the difference between the blue one and the yellow one this is the error our textbook called that residue Our textbook called that residue. Okay, now going back to some theory, going back to some theory, linear regression method, linear regression method we do here. is to find the best 
feeding line. That is the line with the smallest sum of square pairs. Now our textbook used the word residue for their errors, so our textbook will say sum of square residue. Okay. Now the thing is, the thing is, sum of square errors is also shortened as S S E. Now S S R, however, is not sum of square residue. No, it's not. SSR refers to sum of square uh, do difference with regression line. So uh, how to say that? Uh, suppose, suppose this is the mean of y. Suppose this is the mean of y. Suppose this is the mean of y. Then the square due to the regression lines, the square error due to the regression lines refers to this difference here. Refers to this difference here. So from the regression line to y bar. Okay, maybe instead of writing it that way, maybe I say it this way that sum of square regression, this is the sum of the square difference from observed value. Uh, no, 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 uh, minus y bar, I think it should be y hat minus y bar. That's the sum of, uh, we call that SSR. Okay, now the thing is our textbook use the term sum of square residue, but sum of square residue in other textbook actually refers to sum of square errors, not sum of square due to regression line. Now, this SSR here is uh, the sum of the square of the difference between what they predict, that this is the regression line, from the regression line to the y bar so the mean of y uh, now i hope you start getting confused if you don't get confused uh, means some <laughs> you, you get confused you should get confused because of the terminologies yeah you should get confused because of the terminology is not uh, being used by our textbook not in line with what's supposed to be used in more general statisticians okay now you will see later on you will see later on sum of square total difference is equal to sum of square errors plus sum of square due to regression line okay and uh, strangely, R squared is equal to SSR over SST. Now, 
what is SST? SST is the sum of the square total, which is the observed minus y bar. Okay, that's the total variation equals to the sum of square errors. That is the actual value, observed value minus the predicted. Plus this one is the predicted minus the sample mean of one. Okay, so Thomas, how do we get R squared? Do we use this formula? No, 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 no. We don't use that formula. We can just use this formula. R squared is basically this R being squared. Okay. Uh, again, the nice thing is our textbook, our calculator allow us to find these numbers without computing anything. Do you realize? You don't compute anything. You just plug them into calculator and you call that statistics. Nice, huh? So let's do bigger problem. Let's do bigger problem. Uh, suppose I want to do I'm looking for good questions by the way. Oh, you know what? I need to say this. I need to say this. Uh, strong linear uh, relationship or correlation if the magnitude of R either is positive or negative you take the absolute value is greater than 0 0.7 even though I prefer to say the R to be greater than 0 0.9 okay uh, if absolute of R is greater than 0 0.9 then we say that's very strong to the point that it will beat all hypothesis testing later on. Uh, what I mean is, even if we say the R, let's say 0 0.7, we still need to do hypothesis testing to see if there is any linear relationship in, uh, for them, okay? Which I think we will see in chapter 13. But for now, we just take it by faith that if it is more than 0 0.7, there's, uh, there's re linear relationship. Let me delete the word. Uh, strong here. There is some linear relation, so not strong if it is greater than 0 0.7. Uh, the magnitude of R is greater than 0 0.7. If it is greater than 0 0.9, we call that very strong. Uh, hold on. I think we call that strong, not very strong for 0 0.9. Put question mark here. I wonder if I will use the word very here. I think 0 0.95, uh, 0 0.95 is when you call it very strong. 0 0.9. Well, we'll see that later. Yes. Too many things I have to remember, you know, but uh, I, I have to say that uh, it's more about uh, you getting used to these basic terminologies first, okay? How to find the R, how to find the R squared, how to find the linear regression, okay? That's, that's first for now, that's first for now. That's first for now. So let's take a look on the following question. Uh, I will pick this question here. What is the, the, the passage before that? Ooh, that's a long, 
Wait a second. Wait a second. Number 28. That's number 28. We have that question now. And we want to see if the length actually uh, correlates with the width. Now, let me ask you to plug in the data into your calculator. Okay, and the length will be the independent variable. The weight will be the variable we try to explain using the length. Okay, you try to do it, please. Is linear regression going to be in test four? Yes. Yes, linear regression will be in test four. Okay, you do it, I do it too. You plug into your calculator, I plug into my calculator. Show you what I do. Yeah, you can clear the list first, but you can also write it on the top of that because the number of data I have is more than five anyway. I really wonder how they actually measure the height of a bear without being eaten. Now, uh, that statement doesn't mean I question the validity, validity of their data, though. No, not at all. Okay, I just wonder how they measure it. It's like not sarcastic uh, in sense of questioning their data, but uh, I really want to know. I mean, who wants to get, who wants to work in that kind of field uh, to measure the, the height of a bear, you know, uh, with this kind of weight? I guess I will not be one of them. Remember uh, the textbook said, and of course that's true, uh, I also emphasized that earlier, that be very careful with outliers, right? Now, in other words, in other words, make sure when you plug in your data, uh, you don't miss any digit, like what happened to me right now. See, I'm supposed to actually do it from the very beginning. Oh, 
Ori. Your is not showing our values. How about the R square? Yeah, you need to uh, turn on the stat diagnostic from Lydia. Seems like we have an, a TI-84 expert here. Yesterday, I went through this stat diagnostic. I went through this stat diagnostic and turn it on. I turn it on here. Okay. Then, yeah, we get the linear regression right now. Uh, let's answer the problem. Uh, which variable is explanatory here? Well, the independent variable. That's the length. Uh, draw the scattered diagram. Oh, okay, I go back to my calculator then. Now, when it comes to multiple choice, when it comes to multiple choice uh, problem or department final, uh, they can't really ask you to draw the scatter diagram except then, except when uh, they give you multiple choice and you choose which one. Okay? They give you multiple choice and then you need to choose which of them uh, is your uh, scatter plot. So to go to scatter plot, I go to zoom. Zoom stack. Mm, that's what it is. So this is my answer for B. Determine linear coefficient, correlation coefficient between weight and length. So part C. The R equals to 0 0.70390. And then part D, does linear regression exist? With uh, part D, the absolute of R is greater than 0 0.7, then the answer is yes. You're supposed to look at the table, though. Uh, you're supposed to look at the table uh, according to what our book says. You're supposed to look at the table somewhere. I don't remember. Uh, attachment 2, I guess. Let me look at the book. Okay. Table two, appendix A. C, table two. Appendix A. When I say yes here, I didn't look at the table. Yeah, when I say yes here, I didn't look at the table. Uh, but my guess is it's yes because it's more than 0 0.7. But let me make sure that they're not supposed to give you uh, a kind of like that kind of answer. Sorry, this table. There's so many tables here. 
how many data? 12. So, 12. Yeah, it's 0. Yeah, 0. 0.576 is the critical. And this is outside of that. So the critical value, it will follow T statistic. Now the thing is how do they get that number is something we will see uh, very likely tomorrow. Okay, now this number here, zero point, uh, this guy here is actually on this side already. Okay, so it means uh, there is a linear relation exists, which which we're supposed to do hypothesis testing on, okay? Which we're supposed to do hypothesis testing on. But the rule of thumb that I use is 0 0.7. The rule of thumb I use is 0 0.7. The greater it is, the larger the sample size, the better that will be. Okay, uh, that's for part D. Any else? Uh, let's go on a bit further. Then how about the part E? about the, the linear regression equation. Linear regression equation will be coming from here. Be very careful with the A and B. That's why they give you the equation, the pattern of the equation first on the top. Y equals to AX plus B. So Y equals to Y hat equals to 1.69417x minus 142.47092. That's the linear regression equation. So suppose I go further, let's call it E1. Find the residue for find the residue for uh, the height equals to 120.5 with the weight 60. I'm referring to this one here. I'm referring to this. What's the residue? Then what we do is you find this, this height here is our x, right? This height here is our x. This is our x. Okay, and this is our y. That's the observed one. Now we want to see what is the, rem the difference between the observed value and the predicted value. So let's plug that in. So y hat of 120.5 will be 1.69417 times 120.5 minus 142.47092. I would just use regular calculator to do this. Here. Okay, 1.69417 times 1.5 minus 142.47092. That's 61.67. Six seven six five seven. That's the y bar. Okay, so the the error, which our textbook called residue, is the observed value minus the expected value, the prediction. That's negative one point six seven six five seven. Okay, that's the residue. 
Okay, now the thing is, what is R square? What is R square? R square means the proportion, the proportion of the y's explain by uh, y bar by the linear regression so let me move a bit to the right try to explain that so let's say this is our linear regression here okay and this is the data okay and this is the y bar let's say that's the y bar i try to make it bigger so the, the r squared refers to refers to uh, how the linear regression see see the error is supposed to be this big this is the 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 difference between the difference with between the observed data and the mean this is the y this is the y bar okay now this line here, at this x here, at this x here, okay, this portion is being explained by the y hat. Now, this is the part that is not explained. Unexplained. This is explain error. Now, when we say residue, this is the residue. Okay, unexplained variation, explained variation, and so on and so forth. thing is uh, yes I understand a lot of terminologies you have to remember here though now, let's do more let's do more this time I jump to 4.2 take some questions from there Should I use this data? I don't really like it, but let's take a look. This is question number 32 earlier in 4.1 a bear market in the store uh, stock market so the word bear here is not the bear that we talked about earlier it's not the same bear sorry uh, it's not the same bear the, the, when we say bear market means the stock price is going down uh, which the market declines by 20 percent or more in the course of the last 20, uh, two months okay what will be the predicted percent change during a bear market that lasted 10 months, 30 months? So we not supposed to actually put all the data in? We supposed to put all the data in? Do you want to do that? Yeah, basically, 
basically what they ask us is this what will be the thirty percent change for 10 months 30 months what we'll do is the plan input data month into L1 and percent change to L2. Right, make sure the order is correct though. Okay, and then you do a linear regression. You can use a x plus b okay so you will get y hat equals to a x plus b then plug in y hat of 10 for the 10 months and then y hat of 30 for the 30 months Okay, that's the plan. Now the thing is like so a lot of data there are okay, which I don't want, don't want to do. I actually prefer to do the following. The thing is I don't know if that's doable. Maybe I do this thing. Let me go back to this one. Uh, can anybody help me? Anybody help me with this? Uh, I will get off from this screen. I will use my Excel. I will use my Excel and show you how to do the computation using this formula here. This formula here. Okay. In fact, Excel can actually compute that linear regression without us plugging plugging in any formula though. Okay. But uh, compared to using your calculator, if you need to use uh, some software, I rather you depend on Excel instead of the eighty four. Okay. But uh, somebody help me. Do me a favor. Okay, I hope you have that page. Uh, please help me with reading these numbers later on. Anybody with microphone, help me with please. Let's see who has microphone. Robert, can you turn on your microphone and read that this number for me later? What I think, what I will do is this is my X, this is my Y, and center the and then I will plug in numbers one thirty nine or one ten. you see what I'm doing right now? Yeah, you can see. I, I'm using Excel now, right? Uh, I'm looking at uh, number 28, that uh, the problem we did earlier. The problem we did earlier. We compute the, we find the linear regression equation by using calculator, right? So basically we didn't compute anything. But I want to, uh, no, the new one is way too long. Uh, I don't want to do that. Okay. And then 139, 90, 1.5. For 60, but again, this one you need to be careful. With. You need to be careful. Uh, in the last math, the, 
department final for stats class, they actually make this a free response. And what happened is we get more people making mistakes, not because uh, they don't know how to use calculator, they actually know how to use calculator. But once you have any data that you plug in incorrectly, the final result actually get distorted badly. And because it is free response and basically no show of work, to the point of no show of work, I'm sorry, that uh, you don't know if that's right or not until you look back to your data and notice that, oh, you know what? I plug some data off. Arch this now. So this is my data. This is my data. Okay. The things I don't know if my uh, my I don't know if my data here is my my software here is complete. But let's see uh, the data. I want to create. Scatter plot. Scatter plot here. Ooh. Are you with me? Hold on. Is it what you're seeing? Okay. No. So you see what I see. Okay. So I go to scatter. I will create this. Thing. This one here. Oh, they do it for me right away. Now then, how about the regression thing? So I will go to formulas. Is it formulas? So going to statistics. Regression. Anyway, I honestly don't know. I, I know there's a, a method for that, but there's also there's also a kind of like an additional software that we attach to this Excel to do. Uh, well, anyway, I will apply the formula I, I gave you earlier. So we will need the sum of X. That's easy. That's the sum of X here. Let me draw a line. Line here, so that you know that's the okay. So, if I want to get the sum of x, this is the sum of x, this is the sum of y. Now, what I also need is the sum of x squared, the sum of y squared, and the sum of x y. It's equal to that x squared equal to this x squared. Okay, I will copy this down. And I will get the sum for those three. Okay, so my R is equal to on the top 
will be n, which is 12, times the sum of x times y. If I ask Excel to do computation for me, I need to cosine uh, 12, the, that's the sample size, times the sum of x, y, minus the product of the sum of x times times the sum of y close parenthesis divided by parenthesis parenthesis okay. 12 times the sum of x squared minus the sum of x in squared close parenthesis this is the numerator for the sample variance for x on the, the on, on this first one this parenthesis here times the numerator of the sample variance for y I supposed to do square root for each one of them. Let me group them together and do the square root to the power of one five. Okay. And then This is my R, do you see that? That's my R. The R that we have from our calculator is this. This is the R we get from our calculator. 0 0.703903. Now remember that I prefer you to memorize this formula. I prefer you to memorize this formula that R is equals to the covariance of XY over the standard deviation of X times standard deviation of Y. Okay. And then uh, if the linear regression, linear regression is given by y hat equals to a x plus b then the coefficient for x is given by r times s what sub y times a s sub x or i actually prefer to say that's the the covariance over the variance for x Okay. Now you can try. You can try seeing uh, 
what is the a earlier so if i go back to my if i go back to my calculator i mean my excel if i want to find the coefficient for the linear uh, regression that is equals to the covariance which is 12 in this case 12 i use 12 here because there are 12 data 12 times the sum of x y minus the sum of x times the sum of y this is the numerator for the covariance divided by the variance of x that's 12 times the sum of x squared minus the sum of x b squared okay uh, let me put it This is my R. Can you see my A earlier? My A is the coefficient of X is one point it's one point six nine four one seven. 1.69417 okay. so uh, yes using excel we can find uh, the r a even though uh, in reality you will just in your test for your test you will just use uh, TI-84. You will just use TI-84. Uh, by the way, you can actually use TI-84 for this though. You can use TI-84 for this. In fact, uh, let me see, let me show you the inner working of this TI-84. Let's go to stats. Is that the number we put here? Yeah, that's the number we plug in. So your L3 go up are you seeing what I'm seeing? Oh, here. I go to L3, I go up. Okay, but my L3 I will type as L1 square. Boom. And then my L4 go up, go to the L4 part, and type that as L2 square. Boom. And then my L5, I will call that L1 times L2. The entry you have in list one times the entry two. Then if you want to find the sum, uh, then you go to stats, calculate one part stats, L1, for L1, you get it, for L2, you get it, for L3, you get it, L4 and 5. Let's say L5. You see, the sum of X is uh, this number here. See that? Uh -uh. So this this number turns out to be around the point. So we're not supposed to do. Not supposed to. Okay. 
uh, in fact, you will see that we actually don't need the uh, list two and uh, list three and list four. We just need list one, list two, and list three. If you think about it, because the sum of x squared already computed in L1. So let's see stats. See the 1714.5 is the sum of the first list and 246447.75, that's the sum of list three. Right? Take a look in our edit here. So I actually don't need list three and list four. I just need list five. So uh, the the inner working of our calculator it actually does the following. It does L1, L2, and then L3 only, and then use the formula I showed you earlier to get the R, to get the A, to get uh, the Y intercept of the linear regression. The Y intercept of linear regression. I'm about to finish this. Uh, the Y intercept of linear regression is computed by. The B, if you wonder how do we get that B. Yeah, what happened? Doesn't be here for okay. if you wonder how to get that B, this y intercept of the linear regression. Uh, what you can do is you get y bar minus a x bar. So, the uh, sample mean of the observed minus the coefficient of linear regression you have earlier minus y bar. Okay, that's how we get that. Again, these are actually the details that you don't need for your department final. Even for my final, I don't, for you to do these kind of things by hand, uh, even if you have calculator, will take you quite some time. You know, if you need to plug all this in, and then compute this and that. So you focus on this method that I show you here. Okay, you focus on this. You focus on this. You definitely need to know how to do this thing. Okay, you definitely need to know how to, do, to get this. You enter the data and then get that result. Okay, enter the data and then get the result. Now, I may give you a supplemental test, just like last time, which I actually have no in, uh, interest in, but uh, maybe as a homework instead, to ask you to do it by hand using Excel, using Excel. So Thomas, what happens if I don't have computer? Then you download Excel to your smartphone. Okay, there's an Excel file, Excel app that you can put on your smartphone. And then just screenshot that. Once you're done, just screenshot that, uh, send it to me, if that's the case, okay? But let me think about it. I'm honestly to be a, a bit lazy recently though. Yeah, a bit lazy recently. Uh, Thomas, what we will do tomorrow then, I am planning to do uh, chapter 12 tomorrow. Uh, the uh, test for goodness and fit. So please read chapter 12. Uh, just really uh, barely. It's more into uh, using calculator tomorrow, as I know. So basically, linear regression and uh, test for goodness and fit. Yeah, goodness of fit uh, pass and uh, the test for independence. Uh, will you will not find that in my old test because this is the first time I can go this far. Uh, I can get to chapter 12. Yeah, so that's what I will do tomorrow. Uh, and then on Monday, I will not have new material. I will just do review. If you have question, I answer it. 
Uh, if you have no question, I will try to go over the all department final. And then Tuesday, we have a test, test four on Wednesday. I hope I already return you the test four. And at the same time, we will go over uh, the department final again. Okay. Until now, I still don't hear any word about the need of using the department final in our uh, this summer session. And what I know is they don't have uh, anybody writing the department final yet. So there's a chance that uh, it will be my own test that being used. Now, what happened if they get to department final comments then? Uh, that's why tomorrow, uh, after the class, I will give you a sample department final for you to study. So this weekend, you will have two things you need to study. You study for your test four, and you will also study for the department final, okay? Uh, any question? No question. Okay, see you tomorrow then.